type a little bit with some of these variables to get used to typing variables and the operator and then um, another and then another value. So so height times two, height plus, plus zero point one. So what do you what do you see in common with all of with all of these? Um, you'll notice that we declared the variable height and assigned it to 1.6. And in all subsequent expressions, height is equal to what? Can you see? 1.76. 1.76. I put 1.76 in because that's how tall I am in years. Okay, it's 1.75. Um, but if I say height equals 1, Here's an area that you'll start encountering when you actually start to use variables. So Swift, when you, when you get into variable land, Swift actually doesn't, doesn't implicitly convert types anymore. Where it was meaningful before to say 1 plus 1, sorry, 1.1 1 .1 plus 2, and Swift was converting that for us into a double. It doesn't work that way with, with variables. So in this case, the integer on the left will start to Plane. So, um, plus cannot be applied to operands. So, operands are the expressions on the left and right hand side of a given operator. Cannot be applied to, oper to operands of type int and double. So, height is an int, point 0.1 is a double. So, if I change height to 1.0, everything should be happy and kosher. You make sense? very good 
in a diagnostic way. So if you have, if you're, if you're writing, if you're writing a, 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 a large block of code, like several lines, and something's going wrong in them, but that's not the thing you want to focus on at the moment. You're working on some other problem in Interface Builder or some other problem in another file. You can use slash these block comments to take whole chunks of code and turn it into and remove it from Swift's consideration. That makes sense. So it won't evaluate them anymore. It'll just turn it into essentially white space. Um, it's as if it were never there. So the five different ways of adding one. Um, in this case, x equals x plus one. So remember when x was declared as one up here? I'm going to copy that. Here x is going to equal 1. Now, that means in this next statement, this x is the x up here. So the value of x at this point is 1. The value of x on the left hand side of the equal sign is 1 plus 1. Does that make sense? So this x, the value of x here and the value of x here are going to be different. The value on the left is 2, the value on the right is 1. That's correct. So in subsequent statements, the value of x is going to be 2. So if you see here, I'm just, I'm just placing x into there to show you on the right-hand side that those results are indeed what I ended on. So 2. This syntax is shorthand for this one. I can put whatever value I want to here, but the plus equals is just shorthand for equals x plus. So you'll see that a lot as well. Plus plus is shorthand for this one. The, the difference is that here, um, I actually can't choose the value I'm incrementing by. It's always by one and only by one. This is the same. But you'll notice a stark difference in the value that's displayed by the by the, uh, uh, the by the playground here in the results pane. For this one, the value of that expression is three, so it's the value of what x was before it was incremented. Here, the value of that expression is five, which is the value of x after it's incremented. Does that make sense? So the weird thing about this syntax, plus plus, is that it's actually an expression itself. It's very different from x equals x plus 1 or x equals 1, which is a pure assignment. So in this case, this value, this expression doesn't actually have a value. I don't think it's functional in that way. So this gives us an error. But in this case, x plus plus actually has a value assigned to it. So don't worry too much about this yet. We're going to come back to it when we start talking about loops because it's a very common syntax to see in loops, uh, which are constructs that enable you to execute chunks of code in repetition. Just pl is plus plus x an expression? It's a, yes, it is indeed. So, but it's the value. Why is that though? Like, that one equals the value of x before the addition versus one equals it. After. I'm sure that there's a very long and obscure history to this syntax that I actually don't know. But nevertheless. Is, common, is the plus plus x common in all languages? Um, it's common in C and C. It's found in C and C. I think you see it in JavaScript as well. Any JavaScript fans? PHP? Yeah. yeah. Any, any, Most C derivatives. Yeah. Java? Anybody? Any Java fans in here? No? I think it's in Java as well. I think it's also in. Had one, had one just a second ago. Anyway, Java, JavaScript, PHP, C, C++. Yeah, so yeah. I don't think it's in Ruby or Python, actually. I think the whole, like, their syntax is much more like, rigid in some ways. Um, less, um, less derived, less derivative. I think that the rest of this kind of makes sense. Um, here we're actually starting to write full expressions using variables instead of just numbers. So here, calculating the area, computing the area of a circle given radius, given a radius.
to set this constant pi. Does that make does that make sense? Is that readable to everyone? Pi times radius times radius pi r squared. Pi r not squared. Cornbread r squared. You know this phrase. I'm sure we forgot on purpose. Right. <laughs> So that's that's variables. Um, what I think we're going. Quick to question. Yes. Um, um, so if you go to like uh, the twenty-eight, where you have variable x equals one, each time you may have already said this, but each time you, you type down those increments, like if you go back up and change the one to two, ah, it doesn't. It all changes. Uh, so that might, might didn't do that for some reason. Okay. If it's supposed to, then that, yeah, that was, my, that was my question. It might have crashed, so. Uh, do you have a frozen spinner down here? Uh, I'll figure it out. Okay, any questions? You had a question? So there I think we're going to stop. What I'd like you to do is find a partner and open up in class activity dot playground. For the next 20 minutes, I'd like you to do all of the steps from top to line 16. Oh, sorry. So, dang it. Sorry, I haven't gone over this one. Um, I kind of trust the course material I'm given a little bit too much. Um, go ahead and do. Go ahead and do five. Do. Do seven. See if you can figure out how to do that. Here's one syntax that I need to show you in order to complete some of this. So under variables, if I have a value pi and I'm trying to create a string, I'm going to go through this process called string interpolation, which is to take a value that is not a string and place it into a string. And the syntax looks like this, quote, some value of text, some, some, yeah, some set of text. Then I'm going to do backslash, open paren, and then some expression like pi, and then close paren. And then I can put stuff back. You see how that works? So this syntax, backslash, parenthesis, parenthesis, enables me to put a chunk of code into the string itself. This is like a little black hole, according to the string, like a little bubble of Swift code that I can place into a string. I can put anything I want into there. So I can put plot pi plus one, anything that has a value, one plus one, 22.0 over 7.0. It takes whatever that result is and places it into the string. Okay. For the um, number 13, where it's like, if the first minute is No, you 
have to you have to do you have to do this. Well, it's code, but it's no. But you don't have to like write like, an if statement or anything. No, no, and we haven't gone over if statements. But I want you to get I want you to get practice in actually writing code before we start to dive into that. So um, we're actually we're actually pushing your statements to the next class. What about which is optionals? Optional next class. No, can't go over optionals until you go over. Until you go over controls. Can't go over loops until you go over control form. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's a very there's a very specific order to this. And uh, when I used to when I used to teach intro to programming, like what I just what I just showed you is actually like two weeks worth of material. So I'm actually going much faster because mobile development is like three times as much material to go over. So but we're actually not losing any ground. I think it's better to have this percolate in your minds instead of trying to shove tons of information onto you at once. Um, you should feel free, however, to jump ahead. Uh, so uh, the slideshow that I have uploaded actually goes over conditionals and loops and options. Okay. So this is a. Uh, some of these are conditional. So this is about twenty-one.
Oh, okay. uh, all right. So uh, just a just a heads up. There's uh, another one down here at the bottom. Create seven variables that represent the diameters of all non-Earth planets, and then tell me whether all of those planets can fit in the distance from the Earth to the Moon. <laughs> This is an interesting question, though, because it starts to put it in perspective of, like, the Apollo missions. It's, it's a phenomenal fact. Mine just keeps crashing. It just keeps crashing? That's yeah, right. so. yeah exactly. <laughs> making, a lot, making a lot of progress. All right. By the time the class ends, we'll get Git and Playgrounds all figured out. <laughs>
the only thing I was trying to think is like they wanted to be able to like, uh, like make, I guess, with this person. Yeah. Like if they wanted us to say like, if this age is like action, make it like
just takes too long to Google all that stuff. I, I just I put them all down at the bottom. Oh, yeah, but yeah, I got yeah. I got rid of them okay. because they they require conditional. Because we were like we did exactly it. We're like this seems too easy. Oh, did you did you well, start no, we using? Just typed it in. Yeah. Time. Oh really? Like, just because we didn't have that conditional. Yeah. Oh okay. But we figured that was not that was <laughs> that, not the, that the exercise. I don't yeah. think this is right. You were the kinds of people that took the stickers off your Rubik's cubes, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. No, just just oh, yeah. these, I think. Um, no, it's, it's the check. It's checking. It's true. Are the right. one will the so conditional true. statement is coming? First thing next class. Okay. Is yeah. it like we did? We did. Um, yeah. Like it was, it was. It was. The intent was to go through all the all the material. Yeah. I think we didn't we didn't get there because we I went into more depth than than what was what was laid out. But also the format. I think I'm going to switch around. I think I'm going to have. I think I'm going to have people dive into the playgrounds first, yeah. and then like show you syntax, playground details, playground again. Yeah. Like go back and forth instead of this like chunk, and, like yeah. chunkish way of doing things. So kind of, kind of pissed at thinking that earlier. <laughs> starts to come into play.